Diagnosing a key off battery draw or parasitic drain used to be relatively simple. There were common causes like trunk light or glove box lights that wouldn't turn off or cigarette lighter elements that had failed and continued to heat up even after the key was removed. You know, we take the negative battery cable loose and wire a test light in the series and if the light glowed we knew that something was on that shouldn't be. Then it was simply a matter of pulling the fuses until the light went out and that would identify the circuit that had the problem. Today, parasitic draw is a little more elusive and a little more complex. And finding the cause is the subject of this edition of The Trainer. Now there are literally dozens of electronic control modules on a modern car and they run everything from the engine and transmission to the headlights and radio. Of course, while the car is running, that's not a problem. They're all powered up and working. But when you turn the key off, many of these modules will continue to function for some time afterwards, maybe a few minutes to as long as eight hours, depending on the manufacturer. We call these modules awake or still online, and that's normal, it's expected. But when the problem comes up, I'm looking for parasitic draw, is when one of these modules decides that it's not gonna power down or go to sleep, but remain awake, remain drawing power in excess of what that specification that we gave you earlier is. And that can lead to problems with the key off drain. Now, using that old conventional method of taking the negative battery cable loose and then putting a light or ammeter in series could actually mask the problem by causing the module that's staying awake to reset and not be awake when we go to make our tests. So we need to find a way to test for parasitic drain or key off battery draw in a way that fools the system into thinking that the battery is still where it's supposed to be or doesn't affect or open the circuit in any way. Let's take a look at one way to do that. Now, if you've been following along with motor range for any length of time, you know that we're a big believer in voltage drop testing techniques. We have a lot of resources in our community and our YouTube site on that very subject. But very quickly to define, voltage drop is the drop of voltage across a resistance. That's normal, that's supposed to happen. Voltage is used to overcome the resistance. So once all that resistance is overcome, voltage is no longer needed. Now, can you think of something on the car that we might be able to test that will provide us an indication of whether current is flowing non-intrusively using voltage drop? Well, how about the fuses? Aren't they a resistor? Yeah, not much, granted, not much, but they are a resistor. So if I go through checking the fuses one at a time and I measure voltage drop across them, I found where current is flowing and I've done it non-intrusively. Okay, what we're going to do is access the main fuse panel and you can find this in your service information system. Uh, see what powers what. It's called a power distribution diagram. You're going to need that later to isolate where the uh, circuit problem lies anyway. So might as well go ahead and get that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure across the fuses as I described. Let me show you. Let's see if I just pull one out here. We'll take a look. See if I can show that to you. Get that centered and let it focus. See those two little metal nibs? Both the mini and maxi fuses have them. And I'm gonna place my meter leads one on one, one on the other, using the millivolt scale, because it's not gonna be much, and look for a reading. If I measure voltage drop across this fuse, well, the only way that can happen is if current's flowing. So that's gonna tell me what circuit's awake and which ones aren't. Let's try it out. Okay, I got some really pointy ends here on my meter leads. I'm going to set it on the millivolt scale and turn it on. And then it's going to bounce a little bit, not too concerned about that. And then I'm going to start checking fuses. I tell you, let's start up here. I'm going to get here where you can see it. Again, one on one of the little metal tabs and one on the other. And we'll get a reading of zero. Move to the next. Zero. And I mean a perfect zero. That means no current is flowing in that fuse. Okay. Here's zero. And yes, you have to be right on the fuse. Need a good meter. There's zero. Whoa, there's 3.2. Okay, let's, uh, let's try that one more time so you can get a little closer look and see you know, what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm measuring the voltage drop across the fuse. Meter lead right on the little metal tab on one side. 
Then on the other, zero. Then we'll tab on one side. Then on the other, zero. A little metal tab on one side, then on the other, 3.3. There's a voltage drop, small, it's only 3.3 millivolts, but it means that current is flowing through this fuse. So whatever circuit this fuse is sending power to, that's where I need to focus my attention on. And again, did it non-intrusively. I didn't have to open any circuits. I didn't have to interrupt power to any of the modules. So whatever's causing the problem is still there, easy to find. Now it's a matter of just tracing down exactly where the problem lies.